Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to graph the position of the plane that we're tracking in three ways. First of all, we're going to graph it according to the predicted values. The predicted values simply were the initial position, the assumed acceleration, the assumed initial velocity, and then simply extrapolating it out as if everything was perfect. The second one would be the measured values. We, let's say we're tracking it with a radar, we get position and velocity from our radar calculations, and we plug those in, and of course those tend to be somewhat erratic because we don't track perfectly. And thirdly, we then put a Kalman filter on it. We just went through three rounds of that process, and we're going to see how those three values then stack up against the predicted and the measured values. Here we have the list. Here were the measured values, here are the predicted values, and here are the Kalman filter values. For a position after the first round, it was assumed to be at 4,272 meters, which is right in between the measured value and the predicted value right in between, which is kind of neat to think about it, that it kind of smooths out the difference between predicted and measured values. Of course, neither one of them are absolutely correct. The second value for after round two came out to be 4554. 4554, again, it was somewhere between the predicted value and the measured value. And then you see a very small, a very erratic change in the measured value. And so normally, if you were only looking at the measured values you'll be really pulled off but the Kalman filter moderates that and says no I don't think you're quite that far off you're at 40, 48 44 48 44 which would put you just below the predicted value and notice then the Kalman filter smooths things out quite nicely and comes up with very a very smoothing action that you get from the Kalman filter. So every time you get a new measured value in and you then have a new predicted value, the Kalman filter just combines the two, puts a weight factor between the two depending upon how you've been doing so far and smooths out that process to get you right into where the actual position and actual velocity of the, of the object that you're tracking uh, is. So the whole idea behind the Kalman filter is to find the correct weighting value between the predicted values and the measured values according to how things are coming along and how erratic the measurements are from the tracking mechanism and how the predicted values stack up against that. That's how we do Kalman filter and you see that it works even after three simple rounds you can see how effective the Kalman filter can already be. And that's how that's done.